Hey everybody, good afternoon. It's Vicki Williams with the Willow Group EXP Realty. And today I'm so excited to be introducing you to Paris Love. Hi Paris, how are you today? Hello, hello, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm having a work from home day. I love the flexibility of being able to work anywhere, don't you? Oh yeah, love it, love it. This is great. Yeah. So Paris is the owner and CEO of Paris Love Productivity Institute, which has a curious name. So I want to know more about that. Tell us about that, Paris. So 19 years ago, and I'm 25, so remember that. <laughs> you were a baby. I'm a baby. So 19 years ago, I started my business as a professional organizer, and my company name was Organized with Love, because I try to play off my name. And probably about 10 years into it, I rebrand to the Paris Law Productivity Institute uh, because we do a lot of productivity and efficiency with our clients. So rebrand to the Paris Law Productivity Institute. And I play off my military background because my colors are purple camel. So, because everyone calls me the drill sergeant of productivity. So, oh, we have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, when someone needs structure, you're the girl, huh? You're going to make yes. it happen. Mm -hmm. so, so, what kind of services do you offer exactly? So, we offer physical organizing for the physical clutter that's the paper, that's the kitchen, the garage, all of that. People call me, come help me with my office because I have piles of paper I don't really have any system but that's not really why you calling me I'm the I'm the individual that gets to the root cause of the clutter because the clutter is just a brought something else so that's where the drill comes that's when the productivity comes in because as we know a cluttered mind does nothing if you're overwhelmed you do nothing so it's how can we create systems so you're more efficient and more productive throughout your day so and what made you want to get into this line of work? Just curious. So many years ago, 25 years ago, uh, <laughs> I was that I would make their bed, organize their room. I went to college and organized our room. When I went to school in the 80s, we had room inspection. And my roommates, it was three of us in this little bitty room. They wouldn't make the bed or clean the room. So I would do that. It's just something that I always did. If you were moving, Vicky, you'd be like, you know what? I have to move and I need help. I'm like, really? I'm there. Like, I'm, I'm the friend that everybody loves to have around because everything gets done. You and probably thrive on that, don't you, Paris? Do you I, 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 I love it. Helping I people. Love it. You have to have that spirit of wanting to help because everyone has their strengths. Everyone has their weaknesses. Your strength is probably one that a lot of people wish they had, myself included. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. yeah. People say, I didn't get that gene. Like, I don't think, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's a gene. Um, so fast forward, you know, some years later, I was in a doctor's office. I have a special needs son. And I'm organizing the doctor's bookcase, you know, the psychiatrist. And he's like, you know, it's not normal to go to other people's offices and their homes and organize your like well you know my friends like when I come over like I it's nothing weird he said well you have obsessive compulsive disorder and I thought ah because my son has OCD as well I was like ah something's wrong with me so I started doing further research and I discovered the National Association of Professional Organizers and I thought so I'm not weird other people are out there just like me and then the light bulb went off wait they get paid to do this so 19 years ago I started my business and what has been your biggest challenge look that's a good question I don't think I have hmm have you had a challenge that you were like wow I was not prepared for this you know so one um it's only two times, which is really interesting because I'm thinking. So one time I did the show um, Hoarders, A&E show Hoarders. And one of the things that Miss Teresa had was purses, um, shoes. She has some perfume bottles. And a lot of times with hoarding, it's getting people to let go of things. And she like she and like, I'm not getting rid of anything. Everything has to stay. 
And we're like, okay, we're trying to make this work. So we so we did the show. So after the show, if you all didn't know, you get a therapist and an organizer or the organizers, depending on how bad the situation is, for a specific amount of time. So we're doing the back end. We come back and we're trying to do this. And we had to do the dining room. And Miss Teresa is sitting there. She's like, I'm not feeling well. We're like, okay, Miss Teresa, you sit there. We'll just, you know, show you what, what if we can let this go. We like, we ask you questions. And the other organizer came to me. She's like, Paris, I need you. I'm like, what happened? And we go over there and I'm looking and I get quiet. And Miss Teresa's like, are you, are you girls okay? I said, Miss Teresa, you got me on this one. Because she's not willing to let anything go. I'm like, we have to let something go in order to do this. Like, we are like, whoo, you got us, Miss Teresa. Like, can we please let some, and it's the psychological part about it. You know, can we let this go? Are you holding on to it for sentimental reasons? And I get, we all have things that are sentimental to us. But what's more important? Is it the thing or the memory? Are we actually going to use it? Because you're just holding on to it. Like, use it. And if you're not going to use it, release it to the universe. Let someone else use it. You can, you know, gift it to someone, give it to another family member. And so going through that process. Because I was like, Miss Teresa. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Do you ever have a client that you spend a lot of time helping them? And then you go back to visit and it's like just as bad or worse than it was before. Or do people really make a change? Yes. And so that's one thing that I like to come in and do is even with the pandemic, we saw this in our industry. People were like, oh, I have time. Like I can get organized. And we were like, okay, we're just going to sit back and and wait because we can come and make your home look like something out of a magazine. You can have this perfect office, but until you get to the root cause of it, it's just going to go back because those habits, I'm yeah. tired right now. I'm going to leave it. Oh my goodness. I'm not feeling good. So those habits start to creep back in. So it's, we have to establish new habits and we have to establish systems because oftentimes we don't have a system. You know, everything has a place because everything is in this place. So creating that for clients. And again, it's wish we get so used to doing one thing is, you know, it's, like brush, we get up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we brush our face, we shower, like that's routine. And right. just you go, oh, I'm just going to leave this here. I get the mail. I'm just going to pile it right here. So those habits, it's like we have to create new habits. And oftentimes when we come in, we're teaching you those habits and those systems. So it's retraining the brain to do something different. But of course, we might have a bad day. Life comes at us fast. What happens? I'm tired. I do this tomorrow. I do it one day, someday, which doesn't exist, people. It doesn't exist. And so before you know it, you look up and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm back where I was or even worse. So we are like drill sergeant. I'm the one that, you know, texting you, calling, emailing, doing what you doing, Vicky? What are you supposed to be doing? <laughs> so and I think that's probably where some organizers maybe don't do that next step of implementing systems and then following up. So doing it one time and considering a one and done is not how you work. Mm-mm. I love no, that. No, no. I, I used to say one and done. I heard from, and I'm going to give her credit for it because it wasn't mine. Amanda, she was like, you all are not one night stands. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that is, because I always say one and done. She was like, it, it is not a one night stand. No, you're in, you're here to stay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I met you recently at an art show and we just started chatting and I just adored your energy and your, your style. And, and in that conversation, I started thinking, how can, how can I introduce you to people, but also connect you with home buyers and sellers. So, you know, when you're putting your house on the market, you definitely want it to be clutter-free, depersonalized, everything you have a place, a place for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I hope to get to partner with you on some future listings of mine, but also home buyers. When you're moving into a new space, I'm sure it's a little overwhelming because now your habits and your routines are changing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love, love when people move into a new environment. <laughs> Let me in there because I can train you from day one. You have okay. to change those habits. So a lot of times when I'm with real estate agents is you can use this on the front end or the back end. The front mm -hmm. end is we do, and you as a real estate agent, you know, you come in and you're like, okay, we need to do this. We need to take this down. You need to declutter. The homeowner's like, just sell the house. Like we're not doing anything, just sell the house. Because it's, at that time, it's a product. But as a homeowner, this is our baby. This is our home. And you have to look at it from a product standpoint. And so me as, you know, I come in and I can say the same thing that you said. Let's depersonalize. Let's get rid of some clutter. Oh, Okay. You know, it's hearing it from a different person. Exactly. So the, on the front end, it's really decluttering. Because I look I look at homes and I, who is their agent? Like, you really have to declutter that. Because when someone else comes in, they want to envision themselves in that space. When you have too oh, much right. stuff and clutter, they're like, well. And it's interesting because a little touch, even if you have to put it in the garage, for example, if you have five chairs in the living room, a new homeowner goes, oh, it's not enough space in here. Move one chair. Makes a world of difference. Add a yeah. pillow. Makes a world of difference. So that's the front end. On the back end, we will unpack you and put things where they belong. So again, we're not thinking about, okay, I had this over here and I got to retrain my mind. to do. We're putting it in the proper space the first time. And so when we do unpacks, we do, we tell you three days or less, completely unpack, organize, everything's where it needs to be. You come in and you're like, I just moved in three days ago, but I feel like I've been here 30 years. That's awesome. What a great service. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> so I have a story about one time I was showing a home that had a lot of stuff. Wasn't my listing, but I was with my buyers. And this is a story I use as an example when I'm listing a property and I'm trying to talk to my sellers about the importance of pre-packing, depersonalizing the property. So I showed this house to a client. It checked every one of their boxes, every box. But because this particular homeowner had a collection of something, and I don't remember what it was, I don't remember if it was figurines or they had a collection. Well, when we left that house, three houses later, I said, guys, what about that first house? That house really checked off all your boxes. They couldn't remember the house. All they could remember was that collection. Mm -hmm. They're like, are you talking about the house with all the blank? I can't, I wish I could remember what it was now. It's been 10 years ago. And I was like, yes, but ignore that. It had everything you wanted. They're like, well, we don't remember the house. Oh. And so I think that's the power of, depersonalizing you don't want people to leave the home remembering your collection of salt and pepper shakers mm -hmm. as, much, mm -hmm. as much as you may love them they're not going with the house <laughs> the, the yes. buyer's not going to get them so yeah. remove them right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. anyhow yeah uh well i i uh am so glad that we connected your phone numbers on the screen but if people want to learn more about you and your services and what you charge and all of that fun stuff how should they connect with you so they can call me at 770-722-2748 or visit our website, drparislove.com. Drparislove.com. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much, Paris, for taking time out of your busy day to come and chat with everyone. And I'm really hoping that we get to work together on some collaborations soon. Be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. All right. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you.